So I didn't lie. Oh, there we go. Never mind. I think I got rid of it really quickly. I was going to say, I didn't Quick lie. Tease. We are in game. Quick tease. So there was a slight little pause there. But we are loaded up onto the Rift, ladies and gentlemen, for game one of this best of five series. Kong 2 Monsters starting off on the blue side. And Samsung Galaxy coming in as the favorites all were on the red. Kong Du, they want to make a statement right here. They made one when they, as they earned their way back into the LCK during the Summer Promotion Tournament. Now they're going to be looking to make an even bigger statement. And of course, it's the final of what has been a really intriguing tournament. Finally, we got to see the new IEM format, the double elimination, longer group days. You know, we had the yep. nine-hour days. We got to see teams. Some teams obviously came more prepared than others. Some teams had had their rosters together longer than others. This was the final you would have predicted. When we saw the lineup, like, okay, Kongdu's in practice. They did well in Casper Cup. Samsung is Samsung. Fans are here, as you can hear. Yeah, and I think it's a really good point, a very key point for this tournament. Just like these two rosters, rosters have been together for such a long time now. They didn't have to make big changes in the off season. They've been practicing, you know, obviously Samsung for I Worlds. Mean, you say big changes. There are no changes in the off season yeah, for no, either team. Zero changes at all for them. But like maybe like a coach change here and there, but sure. that's about it. Uh, like Samsung, obviously practicing for Worlds. Probably didn't practice too much for Kesper. Oh no, no, uh, they were horrible. Different. They were. Definitely not playing too well, but Kong the Monsters did practice for it. They have practiced for this tournament as well. So because these guys have, been, have played together for such a long time, these new rosters from like North America and Europe obviously couldn't do a whole lot when it came down to actual synergy and communication. But then now we get this matchup where it is, you know, a world is runners up, but the team just promoted back. So on paper, Samsung looked like they've got it. You look at the draft here, both oh those gosh, analysts yeah. are like, br like <laughs> this brimming smiles about what Samsung put together. But there's always the chance that Kongdu, they made a reach. They took the Casio first with so much up. They had to expect a lot of this to come through from Samsung. So why? That's the question. Is it just yeah. oversight or is it something that we really have to kind of see on the rift to understand? Well, my concern is that they feel like Edge needs to get something like the Casio here to really do well against Crown. That is like where I can be like, damn, that's that's a lot of, you know, speculation for game one already. I feel like you got to give him at least one game to prove that he can play all the matchups in there. Because you were first picking a champion that wasn't even going to be first rotation by Samson because Oriana was still available. And worth knowing, Ryze was up here. Uh, Ryze not sure. taking falls through picks and bands. We've seen that a couple of times. But with Oriana, Ryze, skill matchups and matchups like Oriana where you actually win against the Cassio level six onwards, you have to say that it's kind of, I feel like that argument doesn't track, but if it does track, it's really worrying Again, for Kong. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If that is in fact the case, it is an issue. Otherwise, I have zero explanation for why they would draft the way they did, giving legit some of the best picks available for Samsung and counter picks in multiple lanes, mid lane, bot lane. And just to describe it, you know, top two junglers, Lee Sin and Rek'Sai Lee Sin band. Rek'Sai goes over to Samsung. The late game top laner du jour in this Courage of the Colossus 623 meta, just to confirm is Maokai, very much so, can take the late game. Oriana has pressure on Cassio and lane after a lost chapter. And the bot lane is super shoving lane into Ezreal Braum that has very low wave clear. So basically everything on the side is usually like one part of a team. You're usually like, oh, well at least they got the Cassio into Rek'Sai, shame about the bot lane. Samsung actually got the main course, they got some appetizers, they got the five course meal going on, on the red side of the rift. Yeah, but what, I mean, we have to take a look at Kongdu as well. I mean, the Braum, probably one of the more questionable ones, but I also want to talk about Punch here on this at least because basically when, with Kongdu, uh, in their victories, Punch has just kind of popped off in, in his jungle pit, uh, pool. But the Elise is something that we haven't seen so much of. We did have a game during this tournament with her coming back, but uh, outside of that, we haven't seen a whole lot of her. It's been Lee Sin, it's been Rek'Sai, and then that Hecarim coming through. Uh, I might have to hold this point as Ambition is fishing for that first gank onto Edge here in the mid lane. Uh, but I do want to get your guys' opinion now he's going to back off on this Elise and how she kind of fits into the meta at this current point. So I personally think Elise is just fine in this meta because she has AoE clear, which is very important for the Crooks and for the Raptors. She can gank early game where junglers have a bit more freedom due to the longer jungle respawn timers. So she can actually still like carry an early game. But the reason we just don't see her more is because like once you get past the early game, her value just drops down to like a very, very like almost, you almost ignore her in late game team fights. Because it's just like a cool oh, wow, round. Almost got the first blood right there. Crown just pushing way too far forward, not respecting the damage output of Edge. And he really heavily punishes for that, gets the flash away from the Orianna. That's going to make him a juicy target for Punch if he can line up that cocoon. Yeah, even a level 1 Q would have done it there. So really much playing on the Razor's Edge. Didn't have heal or any other sort of defensive summoner. Flash down in mid. One thing you can say about Elise, always been the case. Fantastic ganking jungler. Punch is going to face check Ambition. Yeah, walks in, going to take a bunch of damage here, throws out that cocoon, but he's just going to hightail it back to that tier one turret. So 
So not going to be able to find an entry over onto Crown yet. And the narrative's never changed around the Elise, right? Late game, she's never been a beast. That's Roach. That's a lot of damage onto Cuvee. But it's the early game that matters. We still are in the standard lane meta. We still expect pushing lanes and lane pressure to be one of the central parts of a victory. That was certainly the case at Worlds. So if you can get the job done early as Elise, then maybe it doesn't matter if late game never rolls around. I mean, obviously, there might be a plan for Kongdo Monsters with Elise pick to saying, let's try and get some ganks going, see if we can snowball edge in the mid lane, get Roach rolling on the top side. But it kind of relies on Samsung then also misplaying a bit in the lanes against these ganks because they should know that is the game plan with the Elise pick. So for now, Samsung is doing fine. Yes, they dropped low now twice in the solo lanes, but no one actually died, and Punch hasn't been able to do anything so far. And we can just kind of zoom out, because obviously you and I were talking about our expectations for this series, and kind of the key player on the Kongdu Monster, it's not on the Kongdu Monster lineup that we expected to have to go off for Kongdu to come against the odds and win the match. It's probably not one that many fans, especially fans who are new to Kongdu Monster in IM, would expect, and that's Punch, who his performance here has been fine. He certainly hasn't been a standout jungler. In fact, the likes of, you know, Rainover and Jolie Dardock have had massive games. Punch has been fine. But I think the jungle here is kind of the big variable for Kongdu. You look at Kongdu, who's their best player? Probably Soul. Yeah. But you're not going to get it done against Ruler and Core JJ in the way you're able to dominate other laning matchups. This duo of Ruler and Core JJ, and even Ruler and Wraith, were very, very strong in the 2v2 laning phase, perhaps the strongest laning 2v2 in LCK. So it doesn't feel like Soul on his own or the Kongdu Monster bot lane will be able to kind of bully bot lanes like they have earlier this tournament. Now, I do think uh, it is worth mentioning the Braum. It was highlighted earlier by you, Achilles, like Braum, like why do they pick it here? It does have value. Actually, we see another trade in mid. It's going to go for the damage. Flying game. No and flash and it goes off here by Crown, gets that, that uh, shockwave oh. off. But, oh, Barely living, has those potions ticking through, will keep him alive. Edge not able to find it. That's going to be both something that spells down for him. And we're going to see how good Edge is on Cassiopeia and why they value it as a first pick because he's playing super aggressive in the lane here. He's not being ganked by Ambition just yet. No flash now, no ghost either. This is where Ambition can go in for a very, very easy target. And when you're so confident in this matchup against Ari that traditionally goes the other way, at least now you can predict that for the remainder of this game, Ambition is going to have to be shadowing Crown. He's going to have to be trying to relieve pressure from what has been a massive pressure lane for Kongdu. And suddenly, if his pathing is so predictable, maybe the other lanes is where Kongdu can get things done. Crown had a little a sneaky move there. He just hit around the corner. They thought he'd recall, and there was a big wave at the tower, and then edged back the way, and then Crown just walked back in and actually picked it up, trying to keep it somewhat even in terms of experience. But the Braum pick, again, melee supports are very strong team fighters right now. They tend to be stronger than the mage supports later on in the game. So if Kongdu Monsters are saying we want to go for a bit more late game here, the Braum has a ton of it. He's actually one of the best late game supports. And he does well against like low mobility mages because he can jump them very easily, proc his Q on them, proc his ulti on them, and actually trying to CC them down and create picks that way with his team. And that fits with the narrative that Kongdu was saying in their interview before their series yesterday. They said very much, we're a slow build up team, we're confident taking it to late, but it's taking it late against a new Immortals lineup and taking it late against yeah. Samsung, who've had some average early games. Oh boy, the thought. Yeah, Cougar, he's gonna go ahead, jump behind Soul to stand behind me. We'll actually make it out with his life by the look of things. They've certainly had some Average early games, wayward early games, even against Vegas squadron in the first game of the tournament, but they always turn it on the late game. Even back in spring when they finished sixth, 35 minutes plus, this team was one of the best in the league. Now they've put their pieces together. They're a much stronger team than they were back in the first few months of the year. And thus, you have to really raise your expectations to Samson is mid. And sees this one coming. It's a nice double petrifying gaze straight into a cocoon from Punch. He goes in shockwave. Going to be dodged out by the repel. And first blood comes through Edge. They want more. up. And Drew Shop Raj not going to find anything. But it looks like they will find Crown. Flash forward into the queue from Punch. Takes him down. Two kills picked up for Kong Doom Monster. And Edge so far is on fire Ooh, with this Cassiopeia here. But Ambition as well. He got tagged by the Elise before his gank. He didn't care, he didn't turn around. He then goes for the gank, he, un he unborrows too early, so he wouldn't even get the knock up because Edge put down the Miasma so he couldn't flash knock him up and then shockwave him. So really well played by Edge, but also a big misplay by Ambition. And it's so cool to see Edge take it to the next level. This guy used to be a sub for Nagne on KT. Nagne no superstar, Edge was just an average mid laner at the time, kind of leveled up. The petrifying gaze onto two is massive, and the follow up damage of an early game Elise can never be denied. Oh, and just love again the Miasma down where the tunnel appears. He knows 
He's gonna get flashed on, then Oriana will shockwave, and he dies in just a second, but he completely denies it with that W. Even gets the full Zerm, so maximum respect points there. I highlighted Edge on commentary yesterday in game three with Freak, when he very much dro dropped at the rise into Syndra, usually seen as a bad lane up matchup for the rise, applied pressure enough, basically shut down the pick in lane, and punch on the lease once again, was able to basically take over the jungle that Dardock had dominated in games one and game two. He has the same responsibility here. Cassiopeia is strongest levels one through nine against the Orianna, and he's basically come close to solo killing him three times. It's been a really strong performance from Edge so far. See if he can keep that up. 1-0-1, one, one, gonna be a fantastic scoreline for him coming into this. But also, have to mention that little tack on prize that they got on the end, the flash away from Court JJ, which is gonna get rid of a lot of pursuit uh, opportunities for them in the bottom lane if they wanna try to jump on top of Sol. They can't guarantee that tether by flashing forward. No, and the bot lane from uh, Kong the Monsters is doing just fine down here. There, even in CS, that tower has barely taken any damage against a very strong pushing lane. So this Braum has actually paid off so far because he has not been punished. He's considered a very weak early game support against a lot of these ranged mages, but he's doing just fine in this game here. So, so far, the pick and ban has actually paid off for Kongjo Monsters, even though it looks so, so risky. And he usually has to survive lanes if you're from. As a melee champ, you're gonna get poked by double range, a lot of poke coming through from Sivakama especially. But they don't, you don't usually die in lane as Braum, it's usually a you gank that requires tower. you to take you down, all your turret goes down. Ambition hasn't been able to get to lanes because it basically has been called almost exclusively to mid lane while his top lane is losing, while his bot lane is going even, which isn't ideal given the matchup. And Edge drawing pressure to mid relieves pressure specifically from the melee support Braum. We do have to highlight though Ambition with a fairly weak start to this game. Yes, he's had an experience, but not executing on a no flash Cassiopeia in the mid lane, that way he played the gank. Simply not good enough from him. We know he can do much better, but Samsung has been a slow start on this tournament. You know, they've had some of these first games of the day where they didn't do too much. Could be the same here. The game is definitely not over. It's still so even in goal. Yep, Emission just roaming down, does find Punch in the jungle, spots him out with that Tremor Sense. He'll get a ward over the wall, actually takes away a couple of those tiny Krugs, but overall won't be gaining too much on this invade. Red buff not yet up, but as you mentioned, Officio, gold pretty much even across the board, despite those two kills coming through from Kong Du. So still some solid farming coming out, especially in the top lane. Juve currently up almost 20 CS on that Maokai, but now we might have a dive opportunity in the bottom lane. Ambition coming around the backside, but Punch is there. He hasn't been spotted though, hasn't been moving at all in the brush. So Rexai didn't have vision on that Elise. Everyone backs away. It's really Don't interesting point in the game though, guys, because it's like. No one can really force anything too aggressively because TPs are ready, the junglers are kind of tracking each other, both mid laners can move in case someone has to. No one has like a huge advantage anywhere on the map. And you're kind of just waiting for one team to mess up with like a teleport and give a global advantage to the other team. Or for Samsung to slowly, slowly grind down this bot lane tower, but it takes a lot of time. Yeah. See, so Guger not able to hold that wave for Soul, so he's going to miss out on a little bit of nice. CS. But nice, yeah, deny on the back. Will interrupt, Ruler not getting hit, but pops that E just in case. I mean, soul has been getting really good shops in. He actually enters lane now with two parts of the Trinity Force, the Phage and the Sheen, so has plenty of lane control. Crown's gonna roam bar, is spotted now. Yeah, but he's gonna go ahead and pop the Ghost, has the flash available if he needs to close the distance. Cougar going low, throws out the Glacial Fissure, pops up Crown. Is it enough though? No, the Shockwave will come through, and that's gonna pick up the kill. Soul already thrown out the True Shot Barrage. He's gonna be a little bit vulnerable here underneath, underneath this current. Whoa. Almost goes down, the dissonance just shredding right through him, but it looks like he will be able to make it out alive. And the timing of that roam was really, really smart here from Crown. He knew that Edge was going to pick up blue buff, so he was going to the top side of the map, and Crown would then instantly roam bot lane. They already had the pressure we talked about so often with the Kama Sivir, and just a really easy dive to execute while Edge is basically taking that buff. Yeah, and Soul was coming back. It looked like a great recall time, but because Sivir had stayed, Crown roams to bot, uses his ghost to do it. It's at the same time as they pick up a kill and take first brick. So the actual gold lead, despite the fact that we've been praising so much of Kongdu's early rotations there on mid, all it's done is got the mid lane pressure. Mid lane now roams, they're not gonna get the mid lane turret, and they find themselves in a decent gold hole in terms of the first 14 minutes. Yeah, getting that first brick gonna do wonders for Samsung. We'll see uh, how it's gonna affect their shopping moves. We can see that actually it's gonna be the SM3 for coming out first here for Ruler, so fairly unsurprising with that build path. This is the one that we saw dominating uh, the Silver Market pack during summer when she was uh, pretty much a must-pick, must-ban champion.
Yeah, and nothing too shocking there. And now we get to the point where Samsung wants to really use Saber to just push out that bot lane past the tier 1 tower that's already dead, and then move away from bottom side. Go in and take it, start a dragon where you have full vision of the enemy because you get you can walk into that jungle, pull your wards. Roam mid lane, put some pressure on Cassiopeia, poke that tower a little bit, and then constantly move around the map with your bot lane. And pressure is going to be the word we're going to have to reuse over and over again because the pushing advantage for Samsung is obscene. They have Orianna, Sivra for instant wave clear almost. His ambition shadows Guga. Maokai does some great pushing himself. Kongdu do not have anywhere near the same amount of on-command wave control. So if Samsung want to push, they're going to push instantly. And, and if they want to hold the lane, they can do that too. They are moving forward. Kube was spotted, however, by that ward in the river. So they know exactly where he's at. Knows he wants to come through that flank from behind, take up the turret, and try to get a and dive this out. This is the reason we were so praising this draft. Is this is the sort of draft that would have looked great in worlds in standard lanes because you can push, because you can on demand shove, and also getting the first brick. So getting the first rotation between lanes because you can put down those aggressive wards. Despite Kongdu having that early start, Samsung has exactly where they want to be at 15 minutes. And it's one of the very interesting things about League of Legends that for some people are kind of boring is that like the minion waves are just so important. Kongdu Day taking a little bit of damage here, but nothing is happening as they're kind of fighting for vision around the dragon. But yeah, pushing minions is legit how you set up so many plays in this game. Because if you can push them first, someone has to go down and pick them up. Because otherwise they lose a lot of farm, they lose experience, they fall further behind. So it's so much it's about pushing, pushing, pushing. And it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but it will often lead into a fight. So don't worry, guys. Hey, man, this is what I live for, Deficio. This is my pushing league right ways. here. LCK, baby, pushing lanes. That's what we got. And I know that you kind of get tilted over that if they don't do it properly. It's double, two Korean teams, so I think that they'll have their wave manipulation down. They will down do it pretty, just fine. Pretty down <laughs> that. But during that, um, that Immortals game, it was a little bit frustrating, I know, for you to watch. <laughs> yeah, there were some misplays definitely around the macro game, but Dragon being started now, and this is simply the result of Samsung pushing that bot lane, so you can see the Ezreal is still sitting down there. He just pushed out his wave, he has to recall now, and that's what happens when you have to be reactive and catch waves. And this is the point where 2-1 up, it sounds weird to be like, this is Samsung's game to lose. And so sure. much of the game is still there. The reason why you and I may say that if we're just sitting back, you know, being a peanut gallery for the game rather than being on the casting desk, is that how does Kongdu make things happen when they can't control the waves, when their initiation is maybe a flank teleport from Poppy, somehow Elise doesn't walk over a million wards and gets a cocoon. A lot of the realistic ways for Kongu to force things aren't there. And it's basically, hey, is Samsung going to do nothing for 20 minutes and throw it all into a fight? Probably not. They're going to keep prepping those ways. They're going to keep up the smart macro. And we're kind of already looking for a mistake from Samsung yeah. to give Kongdu a chance. It's a really tough thing about playing a draft like this uh, one from Kongdu Monster without staying hard engaged and staying wave clear. Like. If, this, if we had an Ash here, right, for Soul instead of Ezreal, Possibly. at least you can be like, okay, long range engage, non committal. They get the right arrow, let's go in. They don't, whatever, go back to pushing. With the Ezreal, sure, we've seen Soul in late game fights, but how are those equal late game fights going to be started exactly? I mean, the Jin was another option that was available sure. to them with the Ash band away. You could just open up with a curtain call, trying to play the utility game that way. Uh, but Opta did not go for it, despite yep. Soul's fantastic performances on that champion so far. What we most likely will see is Kongdu Monsters try to just defend for as long as possible. Possible, and then when there is like a next dragon to say like this is the time to fight you know we use the brawn we use the poppy tp and we try and engage into that team with our tanks but by that time you probably have fallen another 1k behind and that's the thing is it's a standard color point about let's lose the minimum we're scaling we've got our tiers let's get the tiers going the issue is the minimum is always really deceptive because and you're not outscaling because suddenly the minimum might be oh, i guess we'll give up the blue buff but it's always blue buff and a deep war it's never just a blue buff and then suddenly the minimum is a baron and then suddenly the minimum is all your outer turrets and that's kind of the issue here is that the stranglehold from a good team is never just one thing everything snowballs into more and just now punch fighting for blue looks pretty damn risky yeah he's going to be able to get that with the smite away has that execute damage on the queue so a little bit easier for him to go in and Confirm that for his team, but still not handing that over to the Cassiopeia where you would love for that blue buff to go. Now, one Mountain Drake, remember, was the first drake. In fact, both teams have a Mountain Drake, so Baron damage certainly not a difficult thing for either team. So that's why I worry for Kongdu is if, if you give up vision, deep vision especially, Samsung gonna have no hesitation to try the Baron. So we almost have to see Kongdu Monsters trying to get like a slight deep board around the mid lane because they know Samsung is gonna push the bot lane go mid lane again and try and take down that mid tower. And if you want to look for any sort of fight openings, you need that ward that Poppy can TP to in that mid lane. But you know Maokai is going to follow. I'm going to, I mean, let's talk about this Poppy versus Maokai matchup. There's been 
a hundred, sorry, 388 CS killed without anyone teleporting anywhere, any junglers visiting the lane. Kudos to OGM. We don't need to look at top lane. Literally nothing has happened with these two champs. And as you say nothing. that, we look. They do right like to bait them. us and actually show us. No, they're level. listening to me, and that's why they're showing us. They're ah, showing us the nothing. They heard top lane, and they're just like, okay, let's go over there. But yeah, it's been uh, it's been pretty dry. We did see Cubay try to come down to mid uh, to get that flank gank, but was spotted out by the ward. So he's tried to get involved a little bit, but otherwise... He was otherwise actually feeling cramped. Been... He was getting bored with CS. He was like, I'll go for a walk. Oh, River, I haven't seen this in a while. Like, I got enough of a lead. I'll let, I'll let Roach catch water back up a Water view is a big bit. thing for property. Why can't it be for top lane? He's going for a little stroll down the water. Oh, he winds his way right back up to that top side. So it looks like uh, they will just be relegated to that side of the map uh, for a considerable amount of time still to come. But Ruler, you can see those wards coming through from Samsung into the lower jungle of Kongu Monster. He's perfectly safe to just push yep. Soul right up to his tier 2 And turret. the moment you say that at 20 minutes, a Sivir is perfectly safe to push into inner turrets, you know that red side control is there for Samsung. Now red buff looks like a buff too far. Soon they're going to get further deep vision in. And that's when you worry, when will the game be killed by Samsung rather than what can Kong do to come back in? Again, it's, it's a really annoying thing where Samsung... Oh, oh, oh. Very nice. Nice dodge, second one of the game here for Punch, getting away from that shockwave. But yeah, it's a very annoying part where Samsung has to like make a mistake to really let Kong do back in this game. They're not just going to randomly throw it all away. And Bishop might get caught, but then again, can just tunnel over the wall. And Samsung, they were in the jungle, got some wards down, and they just backed away, didn't want to take any fight. And they're waiting for Dragon to spawn, and I think that Dragon, this might be the opening for Kongdo Monster to try and take a team fight where Puppy TP is in. They have one ward being placed behind enemy lines down there in the tri bush, but that's about it. They might need one more because that ward could expire very soon. We saw Roach getting angsty with engages in some of the series yesterday. We go for a optimistic teleports and get nothing from them. This is the game where optimistic teleports are actually quite needed. You need to go for something, force the Maokai to yeah. react. And it's a blue trinket ward anyway, so they yeah. can't actually even use it. It's a completely useless for them. If they're not able to contest this dragon, they will not be able to contest the Baron properly, and then this mid tower will fall very soon as well. They have to find an opening to fight to put KCP in a position to actually take people down. We're analysts, you know, we have to VOD review a lot of games around. This is the game where you watch right, the double first... speed. Is that this is when you like see the first 15 minutes, you're like, I know how this game ends. <laughs> Alright, double speed, yep, okay, they cleaned it out. And then if they don't, you're like, wait, I really need to see this to see how things went so wrong. So this has very much been ordered play from Samsung. They haven't done anything wrong, even though we saw all those heroic plays from Edge early in the laning phase. And for now, business as usual for Samsung. Yeah, I hope uh, MC, of course, the new coach of Tonga Monster, sitting backstage, just kind of ripping his notes apart, being like, this big a man face, <laughs> yeah. that was a mess. Let's just redo the whole thing. We definitely don't have any real ways to actually play out this game, except for that dragon here. Cougar needs to get a warden behind. He's on his way. There you go. If you guys look at the minimap, he just placed it on top of the wall, you see near the blast cone, that could be the wall for Puppy to use. Well, Soul trying to go in on a ruler, he's not going to hit that true shot barrage, just goes wide. To get that on the hunt out from the Sivir. See, he sidesteps, but we're all not going to be a whole lot gained. Don't do Monster trying to get some vision control here in the river. Actually going to go ahead and start up this dragon a little bit bold. As Ruler has stuck around, he is at half HP, however. Ambition one more hit away from the sun. There it is. They're going to try to chain him up, pop him up with the Glacial Fissure, but he's got another tunnel available, so he's just going to dash his way out. And that's the desperation we're looking for, using everything on a full tank. Rex I still had Flash up. They would have timed that as well. Sure, they get a Mountain Drake. They have a Cassia Beard. That's Baron's threat. But now Roach teleports in, and... I don't really know what that's going to do. And that's just going to hand the TP advantage over to Cuve. He didn't have to use his walked right down the river. I mean, this is just, let's hope someone's bot without teleport and DPS down Baron instantly with Cassio. That's kind of the dream with these two Mountain Drakes, but they didn't plan for that. They got Mountain sure. Drakes because of the favorable spawns, and that's about all they've got. We can uh, criticize the TP from Roach, but I do want to praise Kong the Monster for the overall call. Sure. They did prep it properly, they set down the deep boards, and because they saw Crown actually go back to base, they're like, let's start it force a team fight where it's 4v5 and then Samsung has to just kind of like bait around to try and delay time. That's what Ambition was trying to do. He's not an idiot just walking in and dying. He was actually just trying to buy time. Yeah, he's had his times when he's, he's done that. He's definitely done that in the past, but this time he was just trying to buy time. It wasn't enough. Crown didn't make it down in time. So it was a good call from Kong the Monster to pick up the Baron and yes, rushing down the Baron, uh, sorry, pick up the uh, Mountain Drake, rushing Baron with uh, Cassiopeia might be the way to win the game now. Oh boy. Well. 
see. They're losing our tower. Because yeah, Cougar up top trying to defend this, but there's just no way in hell that he can hold on to that top tier one, so it goes down. Uh, the comp doesn't defend turrets. It's not drafted to do that. It kind of reminds me of the CJ comp way back when with the Cassid and Fizz lanes, where it's like, well, if you uh, don't get Snowball going, it's bad times, but they do have that Baron buff win condition as the one hope against hope. Ambition not going to find the pop up on the Cougar. Now, really far forward, the rest of the team not there. And Edge is flanking the around the side, gets the Friday Gaze out, but not going to find the stun. Just gets the slows coming through for JJ and Ambition, both going low. And Edge is still pretty healthy. He can keep pumping out damage. Punch can go over the wall with the exhaust coming down now on top of Ruler. Edge going low, almost getting taken out by Cloud. But Kongu, they're able to pick up two kills. Ambition and Ruler both going down. Yeah, we didn't say Ambition was baiting before, <laughs> but this time around he actually did go too aggressive. When you look at this, this is exactly what we were talking about. The Baron being shredded down by Edge, but Kongu, they're still very low on HP punch. He's going to be able to pick it up and boom, right back into this game. And now Crown and Core JJ, they have to try to make it out of here alive. Keep oh, the, okay. the poke damage is so huge. This is to get out. Okay, Kongu, you got the kill. No, no, oh, oh, Saul! Going Even way flash. too aggressive, flashing in with the arcane shift on top of it all. Oh, oh my oh. god! And two Baron buffs gone just like that. Make that three as Cougar <laughs> did fall. And they might be looking for a fourth punch. Really low core JJ just needs to line up one Q. That was some LCS moments right there. Where oh, first. That's going to be the Rebellion trying to trade it back. Oh, 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 oh. Come on. waiting. Oh, the Prey Seeker not quite going to hit him, but there's really nowhere else for this Elise to go. Ambition should be getting rid of one more Baron buff. There it is. <laughs> Roach going to be the sole retainer of that. And uh, Samsung, <laughs> they will actually grow their gold lead in the end. It now made so chaos. much sense to kill us. Then they decided to go full Fiesta. Yeah, so Ambition was obviously way too deep here because his team is running from mid lane. Edge was here first, so that was a poor choice from Ambition. That's why Kongdo Monsters are able to take this team fight, get two kills, double Mountain Drake, rush down the Baron, and you'll be like, wow, Samson just made a huge mistake. Kongdo Monsters are back in the game. Good decisive call. I thought maybe they wouldn't have enough tankiness, but Punch is able to do it just fine, even getting DPS down by Karma. The damage is insane from Cassio Ezreal, but the turn was woeful. Specifically Sol, we saw him skirting the outside we don't of fights show it yesterday. Again. Doing We're doing great stuff, but uh, that's right. Today, we'll just ignore the arcane ship flash into two people, including a pretty damn fed Orianna instant <laughs> death from Sol. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, just to be clear, Roach and Cuvee couldn't teleport, so uh, they continue to be a rift away, and now they're up to, let's look at it, oh, you know, 520 CS without being involved in anything. But Poppy is slowly taking a tower. <laughs> that is some uh, highlights down here. This is definitely a meanwhile at the top. And this is like the most courage of the Colossus game possible when nothing is happening at all in the 1v1. Yeah. Well, Kong New Monster going to be giving up a pretty massive gold lead now over to Samsung. Four and a half thousand in their favor, where before it was just two. Uh, had so the comeback. The Barons just, uh, if they could have gotten out, would have been good. But getting almost completely aced out, that is just going to be handing over even more gold to Sam. One small thing I'll say, you know, obviously laughing about the lack of Poppy Mal, guys, I feel like 5v5 uh, benefits Samsung more than it does Kongdu, specifically because Maokai isn't going to die to Ezreal Cassiopeia very quickly at all. We've seen how unkillable Ka uh, a Maokai is the late game. We're already at late game. It's two and a half items territory for the Maokai, and I feel like Poppy, sure, can tussle with one of the carries, specifically the Orianna, and reduce some damage there. But I think Kongdu have been benefited from it, have it, having it be 4v4 sure. more than Samsung could. I mean, generally, what, you, what people say about Maokai, let's talk about it after, because Ambition and Crown is on the way. Yeah, they really want to finally uh, get a the kill into, yes. the, into the action. He's going to go ahead and use that Keeper's Verdict, but that's a uh, three-item Orianna, so Roach, no matter how tanky you are, you are not going to be living through this one. You can see Gil is handed over to Crown, and that's going to be his fifth 5-1-0 on the Orianna. Has almost all of the kills <laughs> on the side of Samsung. Roach finally felt like he could do something with the Baron buff to I'm take down the tower. Like, I'm doing something for my team! And then he ended up overextending because everyone else was actually coming back from base. He ends up getting caught out. But the thing about Maokai and what everyone is saying about him as a champion is like, he's so easy to play in the late game. Like, you can miss a Poppy ulti and suddenly you don't have the impact you normally would have. Maokai is a point on click snare on a Cassiopeia on an Ezreal, and then you can DPS them down. I would say his main skill cap is actually shared. It's flank teleport, so it requires your team to put down the flank wards and the Maokai to listen to them in communication and make a good judgment of you know, the three and a half second channel, where he needs to be. Because otherwise, as you say, it's point and click, baby. Yeah. You can see Sol picking up that Lord Dominic's regard, trying to get something so he can kind of chip away at Cuvee and Ambition. 
as we are entering into the late game here. But still seems kind of hopeless that he'll be able to knock down that Valkai over an objective fight. We'll see Ambition picking up maybe the first Infernal Drake of the game. And that would give Samsung two. I mean, basically, Kongdo Monsters, they had their chance. It was when Ambition overextended, they caught him, they killed, of course, a ruler as well, took the Baron, and it was like, okay. It started Samson, off so well. Yeah, Samsung just made that mistake. We said that it's the only way for him to lose is by Samsung making a big mistake, and they did. Yep. And they were then handed a game back, and they were most likely in the communications being like, guys, just slow down. We don't have to like do something like this again because we're already winning the game. And Samsung have made mistakes this tournament, but in the first 10 minutes, in the first 15 minutes, this is the first time in mid to late game. Oh, Edge. boy. Yeah, Edge going to go Really in. nice petrifying gate. Yeah, he gets that back in. The petrifying gate comes through. Does stun up too. Ambition trying to confirm that kill. If he can and just turn get this? it. Redemption's coming down. Not going to help out, really. Ground will fall. Punch going low. Comes back down with the repellent. Double kill now. For that Oriana, make it a triple. Can he find the Quadra? Guga gonna flash away. It looks like they'll give up on the chase, but uh, that is enough. They're gonna move back over to this mid lane, likely try to find this tier two tower. And yeah, the 5v5, Turbo Malkai can be there as well. They have both the Oriana speed up and the server. Karma as well. Great comp put together from Samsung. We certainly wanted if we see something special from Kongdu. We did slightly at the start. The game went predictably from there. And it the was a is special, gonna be broken right a now. special pick and ban phase. Sadly, just not a. Yeah. A good one from uh, Kong the Monster. And yeah, we see the power from Samsung here. We talked about so much about this pick and ban phase, and they're just steamrolling through the towers now. This is how we'll also go down very quickly. Yeah, I mean, they still have eight seconds until Punch comes back up. We'll go ahead and knock this down and likely find the inhibitor as well. Just past the 31 minute mark, Samsung really running away with this game now. Nine to five in their favor. Crown getting some serious damage onto that remaining tier two turret is in top as well. Crown is sitting now 8 and 1 on the, on the Cassiopeia. Edge does flash the ulti because he tries to then ulti himself as return, but he's already running away. And this is an unkillable GA Rek'Sai just sitting in front of both Ezreal and Cassiopeia, allowing the rest of Samsung to chase. And we see one of these games now here where Crown struggled a little bit in the early game. We've seen that before, but then once we get past the early, early laning phase, he just becomes a monster and he's not even on Victor, so you can throw that meme out the window. Why are you not banning Victor all the time? Because he can play all the things. I mean, he's got 3,000 gold ahead of Edge at this point. It's just absolutely uh, unraveled here for Kong Doom Monster. And it, it's looking like they might not have any chance of getting back into this game. And his job is so easy in team fights with the comp they've drafted. Cassiopeia has to walk up to do mid-range damage. We'll get chased down by all the speed ups. Maokai in the front line, Rexa in the front line are unkillable. Crown, with no pressure on him whatsoever, can choose targets, assassinate them with how much ability power he's put together, and that's just the reality of the comp that was dropped. Yep. I like some of the items as well from like Samsung, like Ruler goes PD, because he knows the only member who's ever gonna get to him is the Poppy. So by just reducing the damage of Poppy, she's never gonna kill the Sivir, and then it's like, at least for her to follow in teamfights, it's so hard. She has to repel aggressively, and then you just take her down very quickly. That's again why Elise is not a strong late game team fighter. So I really like this item choice. You're saying only one who can actually kill me or threaten me is Poppy. No more. And Simba fights with her tank line, so she's a, a very much a dualist short range carry anyway. So she's invariably going to take some chip damage along. Doesn't have any life steal in the build yet, but the damage reduction will be a start. The damage put up, put forward is already clearly on a very high level. And now Kongdu just kind of buying as much time as they can. And uh, even a big mistake would not be enough to swing this match up. Over is, uh, okay, oh. that happened. All right, well, we'll have to get a replay to see how that transpired. But now Guger and Punch have to hightail it out of their jungle. I think Losing I can predict, Soul, uh, definitely going to be uh, a bad thing. And now we, this, one, this is one you can cast where Sivir pressed ultimate, Soul tried flashing away. And then Sivir crit twice, yep. and Israel died. That's basically what happened. <laughs> All right, well, there. We're going to have that big speed up coming through. Oh, actually going to catch three members. The pushes triple. them over towards that. <laughs> Red buff, but doesn't matter. Samsung, they already picked up the Baron. They're going to be happy with that. Let's go ahead Let's and take see. a look at how this one happened. When does Siva shout and How many crits? Oh, That's hello. one crit, two Whoa. crits. Make it three crits. All right, three crits. Three crits. I You're trusted you to fish. Yeah, I know. One crit off. My bad. You're 66% correct, so. Roach, uh, by the way, just had a uh, highlight of the game. A three man ult. Yeah, he Obviously. feels good about yeah, that. Yeah, he's like, great. I hit him. It's about as best as he could have done. Now coming down. Not going to get any damage out, but the turret's falling. Second inhibitor going to fall. Now in favor of Samsung. Do they want to stick around? <laughs> Ambition says, nah. Whenever Rex like quasi ults in combat, because of course he gets cancelled if he takes damage, it looks hilarious. Zooms past. He's getting across the map. He's going to go ahead and start pushing up this bottom lane. And they'll be looking for that third inhibitor sometime soon. Looks like Cubay is going to fast track this TP back into bottom. Because you know what? There's not going to be a fight happening outside of their base. 
So it doesn't matter if I don't have the teleport. Trainee secret agent QV 002. Hasn't done much this game at all. Game's been completely decided without the uh, top laners being involved. Very fair to say in this game. Yeah, and I think we just have to look for like next game for Kongo Monsters. It's not really realistic they're gonna win multiple late game fights here. Luckily for them, I'm gonna say luckily they're gonna be on red side, so they can't actually like mess up the first pick so badly, <laughs> and they can get better picks for themselves. Well, speaking of the Rex, I mean, one of the things we talked about at the beginning of the game was that Punch needed to kind of go off to really help secure a win here for Kongdu. He has now been flamorized by him. So it's been a really rough game on the Elise for him. I mean, this was just, this was all about setting up an advantage somewhere, and they managed to set up a disadvantage everywhere. So that's the opposite. Oh, Ambition, he's gonna go deep, pops up Roach, and there's a little bit of damage in on the soul, but Ruler. Ford has to back out, get rid of that turret aggro. They're gonna move back in, knock this down. Now the third inhibitor exposed to creep, pushing in from the top and the mid side. Punch going low, Boomerang not gonna be enough to take him out. But it's still looking like this is gonna be the end of the game here. For Kong Du, Monster, Samsung now onto the Nexus turret, so will knock that down third. But the inhibitor has fallen, the Super Dreams are here. Cube going low, buddy. Jumps forward, gets on the punch, got that Guardian Angel. He'll come back oh. up, but the Nexus, Nexus is exposed. Samsung Galaxy going to close this one out just before the 36-minute mark. And it looks like they're not even going to lose a single member in this last Bombing fight. Bombing KDAs, man. Yep. This is just uh, going to be bumping up those numbers right there. Guger falls. Ruler trying to get a couple more hits in, but the Nexus is dead. And that is going to be Samsung Galaxy going 1-0 so far in this best of five set. I felt like Kong the Monsters in the early game had a few decent moves, especially around the mid lane with Edge. Had that outplay on the gang, but he had no flash. 